Markle and Prince Harry announcing they are expecting a baby next year has tripled interest in their royal tour of Australia according to a royal historian. Meghan Markle and Prince Harry are in Australia on their royal tour and have been praised for the way they have greeted crowds during their trip. Last week Kensington Palace announced the Duchess of Sussex Meghan Markle, wife of Queen Elizabeth's grandson Prince Harry, is pregnant with the couple's first child. Royal historian Kate Williams has claimed the interest in the royal couple has tripled since the announcement of the baby. Speaking on Channel 5 News, she said, There was always going to be a huge amount of interest, they are incredibly popular. Their big first royal engagement since the wedding, Meghan's big first royal engagement. But, the minute the royal baby was announced, that increased the excitement and I saw that it was the front cover of quite a lot of the Australian newspapers. She added, I do think it has now tripled the interest and there is interest worldwide as well. Clearly it has gone incredibly well because Harry and Meghan are winning people over. It is an arduous thing a royal tour? I do follow them and I understand yesterday Meghan couldn't sleep, she has jet lag, she's pregnant, it's an exhausting schedule, she said she was up at 4.30am doing yoga because she couldn't sleep. It's tough work and it is impressive they are doing such a great job of keeping going and smiling and really being great ambassadors for the country. On Monday Kensington Palace announced the Duchess of Sussex, 37, and Prince Harry, 34, were expecting their first child. The statement said, Their Royal Highnesses are very pleased to announce the Duchess of Sussex is expecting a baby in spring 2019. Meghan had previously said that motherhood was on her bucket list. Back in 2015, before he met and fell in love with Meghan, Harry revealed that seeing his brother's family continue to grow made him wish he had some of his own. He said, of course I would love to have kids right now but there's a process that one has to go through in tours like this are great fun. Hopefully I'm doing all right by myself. It would be great to have someone else next to me to share the pressure, but you know. Time will come and whatever happens, happens. The Duke of Sussex was all smiles as he greeted the crowds and gave his opening speech at the Invictus Games in Sydney on Saturday. He said, On this day on 1973 my grandmother stood in front of the Opera House and declared it open. Forty-five years to the day, I stand here and declare the start of the fourth Invictus Games. Built around their talents and needs. Not just built for them but built around their recoveries after they had their lives changed forever. Prince Harry also thanked crowds for the welcome you have given Meghan and I over the last few days. Meghan Markle has compared pregnancy to having jet lag after wowing crowds on Bondi Beach, Sydney. The Duchess of Sussex gave an insight into her pregnancy during an anti-bad vibe circle hosted by mental health campaign group One Wave. Meghan, 37, spoke with 35-year-old Charlotte Connell who is much further along the line at 23 weeks pregnant, about how motherhood has had her waking up at 4.30 a.m. to do yoga. Ms. Connell said, Meghan told me that pregnancy was like having jet lag. She said she was up at 4.30 a.m. this morning doing yoga in her room as she couldn't sleep. It's a bit of a double whammy for her, she said, as she has both the baby and the jet lag to contend with. We both talked about how you feel jet lagged even though you have not traveled anywhere. Even in her jet lag, she got up to do yoga this morning at 4.30 a.m. Physical activity like yoga and surfing is so good for healing your mind. Mental health is something Prince Harry has spoken out on and is a keen campaigner to help raise awareness. Meghan and Harry listened to the group for 10 minutes and shared their own personal experiences with the illness to the local community surfing group. In a statement Kensington Palace said, to turn the tide on stigma surrounding mental health issues, one wave is encouraging people to share their experiences of living with mental health issues and the power of opening up using. Dabri Eulick Whale 37, who took part in the session was full of praise for the relatable royal couple. She said, Oh my goodness, they were just so real, so relatable. They shared their own experiences, which was amazing. Shortly after Meghan and Harry had a go at waxing a surfboard as they dipped their toes in the sand at the famous Australian beach. 
Megan wore a sleeveless Martin Grant dress with espadrille tie wedges with a garland of flowers around her neck, whilst Harry wore a light blue shirt, beige trousers and espadrilles. The pair are currently on day four of their whirlwind 16-day tour of Australia, Fiji, Tonga, and New Zealand. Tomorrow the royal couple will be on Cockatoo Island where they will be watching the Invictus Games, a competition created by Prince Harry which will see 18 nations represented. Moments after Prince Harry helped raise the iconic Invictus Games flag on the top of Sindy Harbour Bridge, he comforted a serviceman's widow who joined him on the climb. Gwen Churn, 41, who was one of the select group scaling the bridge with the prince, shared how a sympathetic Harry listened to the story of her late husband, Australian Special Forces Officer Peter J. Cafe, who died by suicide in February 2017 at the age of 48. The pair spoke for nearly 10 minutes on the descent and the prince asked about her children, Emily, 6, Lachlan, 3, and stepson Tom, 19, and how the family was coping. Lachlan is the spitting image of my husband. Harry said something like the children must remind you of him, or live on in him. And I said my son is so much like him, Churn, who grew up in Cleveland, Ohio, tells people. It was comfortable and thoughtful. Churn says Harry, who lost his mother, Princess Diana, when he was just 12, and her spoke about grief and loss. He understood what I meant. When you understand loss, I think it's obvious, she explained. He did ask me if I was getting the support I need from the defense and ex-servicemen and veteran community. She works closely with U.S.-based Tragedy Assistance Program for Survivors and talked to Harry about their partnership with the UK's Diana Award. Harry, who is touring Australia with pregnant wife Meghan Markle, 37, was on the bridge to help herald the start of his Paralympic-style contest for wounded, sick and injured servicemen and women and veterans, which starts in Cindy this weekend. As the 34-year-old prince's entourage tried to move them along from the outing, Harry wanted to ensure they had enough time to talk. He stopped and said, I'm in the middle of a conversation, and I'm not going to leave this. We were talking about my story and mental health and how difficult it is still, in our society, to talk about grief and loss and suicide. And how important things like the Invictus Games are to shedding light on, and allowing people to start to have these conversations that are great to have. Churn, who is an advisor for widows, veterans and families for the Australian Department of Veterans Affairs and an Invictus Games Ambassador 2018. As the grief is the basis of so much suffering. We are not dealing with the daily losses we have or the major losses of a husband or a son. Heaven forbid we actually talk about suicide and the real causes of it and that it is more complicated than just one issue on one day. She added, the fact that he and Meghan are shining their light on the Invictus Games, highlighting for so many people the service and sacrifices the serving members and their families, and highlighting their families, gives people hope. Harry asked quite a few questions about my story, so he had it correct in his head, she says. Churn met Peter, known as Pete, when she was working in development in Afghanistan in 2008. He re-enlisted in the Australian Army in 2010, joining the Special Forces, 2nd Commando Regiment, in 2012. She moved to Australia, giving birth to Emily while he was on deployment to Afghanistan in 2012. Then four years later, while deployed in Iraq in first half of 2016 he suffered a stroke. He had shown signs of PTSD, anxiety and paranoia during our entire relationship. But after the stroke his cognition was not improving as quickly as he would have liked it to. The only sign was that he wasn't processing things as quickly, and he had a small black spot in his eyesight, she explains. When you're in a high-performing environment like the special forces, when you're not performing at your highest, you can tell that, Chern said. That created a lot of anxiety and pressure for him. He started losing thoughts. He didn't believe defense had his best interests at heart, even though they were telling him everything to the contrary. And he became really angry and violent on the Friday and then on the Monday morning he died by suicide in our garage. 
me being involved in the Invictus Games has actually got me out of bed. I gain resilience, churn shares. I don't have to climb a mountain today, but just put one foot in front of the other. She says Harry and Meghan are doing so much good with their place in the world, using their power and their privilege. Many of our leaders could learn from that. They are changing people's lives because of it. They are changing the way we are looking at mental health globally because they care, they are paying attention to it, and flying that Invictus Games. That is changing, and saving, lives every single day. Oh, <laughs> my